Welcome back. In this video, I will go over the theory of determining the critical micelle concentration of a surfactant solution by the means of dietitration method. Surfactant solutions usually compose of a polar head group, that is hydrophilic, but it wants to bind with water, and a alkyl chain. That is hydrophobic. So it wants to get out of water. At a higher enough concentration, the surfactant molecules will orient themselves to form micelle structures so that the outside, the polar head, is interacting with water because it is hydrophilic. And the inside, the alkyl chain, will orient themselves together so that they are away from the water since they are hydrophobic. This process is driven entropically. Recall that the Gibbs free energy is equal to change in H minus T times S. In particular, the whole process has a change in entropy that is greater than zero. Because although the change of entropy of the surfactant molecules is less than zero because they can occupy less microstates when they're in the micelle form because they're ordered. The solvent, or let's say in this case water, are released from these individual molecules. They, if they're having individual molecules, water have to orient around them very highly. But if they aggregate together like micelles, the need of water to aggregate beside them is much less, so that there are more microstates for the water that is being released. Therefore, the entropy change is greater than zero for water, and therefore is greater for the whole system. And because the change in entropy is greater, then the delta G is negative, and therefore the process is spontaneous. In particular, these micelle structures can trap other molecules within the inside cavity. For example, in this case, in this experiment, we'll trap some dyes in it to see if micelles has formed. Concentration of surfactant in which they form micelles is called the critical micelle concentration, or the CMC. At the CMC, there are a variety of physical properties that will change for example, the surface tension will stop decreasing when the critical micelle concentration is reached, or the osmotic pressure will have a less of a slope compared to before critical micelle concentration. The turbidity will drastically increase as we reach critical micelle concentration, and the molar conductivity will decrease nonlinearly after we reach critical micelle. Therefore, we can use these change in physical properties to determine the critical micelle concentration. And in this case, we're using the titration method, which monitors the absorbance of the solution to determine the CMC. In this experiment, we're using a purple dye that changes its absorbance at a critical micelle concentration. We can measure its absorbance using spectrophotometer or colorimeter, which are the same thing, at this particular wavelength of 615 nanometers. This wavelength corresponds to a purple color. We can measure it using the equation that the absorbance A is the negative log of transmittance. And the transmittance T is defined by, if we have a cuvette, we have some incident light, I0 that has intensity I0 and a transmitted light that has intensity I, then the transmittance is defined by the output light divided by what we're having in. And then we take the negative log of that, we can get the absorbance. And the absorbance is somewhat proportional to the concentration of the solution. However, that correlation changes at the critical micelle concentration. So say we have the concentration of the solution and the absorbance of the solution. 
So initially we have a stock solution that has a high absorbance. This is a high stock solution. It has a high absorbance because the color is very deep. However, as we dilute it, that this is dilution, the absorbance decreases almost linearly. So we can fit a curve onto it. However, at the critical micelle concentration, say it's here at the CMC, the slope of the curve changes so that the absorbance might decrease more steeply or less steeply. And that change in slope, at the point that it changes the slope, we can determine the critical micelle concentration. So by diluting the dye solution, we can see the change in slope and therefore determine the critical micelle concentration of the solution. After knowing how to determine CMCs, we can explore the dependence of CMC on other properties. And in this case, we want to correlate it with the concentration of counter ion. The surfactant that we're using is sodium dostasyl sulfate or SDS that is an anionic surfactant that has a negative charge. So it comes with an counter ion of sodium which has a positive charge. And the positive charge could affect the critical micelle concentration of the solution. And we want to explore that by changing the counter ion concentration and plus counter ion concentration of the solution. And this includes counter ions originally come that comes. With the surfactant. Each surfactant should have a corresponding counter ion in a plus, and you might also, you could also add other counter ions that are extras such that you can add NaCl into it. So there is extra counter ion, but this is, these two both counts within the concentration. And the CMC is the critical micelle concentration. A and B are empirical constants that we can fit. So we can graph a curve so that on the y-axis we have the log of CMC that we can determine and the log of the counter ion concentration we can determine. So we should expect that since A or B are positive constants, it should have a negative slope. We should be able to fit a curve through that linearly. And at each of these points, we can determine its CMC using the method described previously, so that we have absorbance and concentration. We can measure the absorbance with respect to concentration, but we could see a change in slope and concentration that the change in slope happens is called the critical micelle concentration for that particular counter ion concentration, say 0.03 mole. And then for another one, we can do another slope analysis to get the CMC. And similarly for other points. So we can construct a graph to calculate what the A and B constants are. In this video, we briefly went over the theory of critical micelle concentration, how to determine critical micelle concentration by titration, and we explored how we can correlate CMC with the counter ion concentration.